welcome to the captain's vlog. Try as I might, I don't know where I am if I look for the light as a light. It's a land. Here we are at the captain's vlog again and today we have our first collective presentation with the Gallus Crows and we have Ronnie. Ronnie. Ronnie, can you tell us something about the Aye, sure. Over. So uh, let me let me introduce the the band to you first, Absolutely. and then we'll talk about We're all equal. how it started. <laughs> first amongst equals. Aye. So uh, I'll do it in order of yeah. gallusness. Oh. So uh, starting with the least gallus, that that's me. I'm the least gallus, and then it's Dick, our bass guitarist singer. Uh, then I think it's probably probably an equal tie for top gallusness between Kieran, our cajon player, guitar player, and Gordon who plays a multitude of instruments including including banjos believe it or not but mostly guitars and mandolins yeah and where did the name come from Gallus Crows um, it's uh it's from a song that I wrote uh one of the first songs I wrote so I, I'd never written any songs until I was in my late 40s and then for whatever reason I started writing songs and that was one of the first songs I wrote and it, it's really a reference to every day I go through uh uh, Livingston to work on the M8 and there's these crows at the side of the road and they always get a bit too close to the cars before they move off so Gallus yeah. Crows came from there. So this podcast will be going worldwide so Gallus can you just uh, Gallus. explain what uh, Gallus actually means? It's uh, confidence with aggression <laughs> I would say I would sum it up as Excellent. a great old Scots word. Good good. So uh, the, the band started probably eight over eight years eight ago years. Uh, Gogs and Dick and I were uh, knew each other from Midlothian sessions and from uh, a guitar club in, in Lone Head. Uh, and following on from that, Gordon and I started uh, getting together and uh, trying to write some songs and you know put a, a bit of an act together, yeah. some cover versions, yeah. a lot of cover versions at the start, and then more and more introducing our uh, our own songs into the into the repertoire. Uh, we used to practice out in my garage. Uh, which was Baltic, because uh, we, you know, the time we got together, it was winter. So, top tip for anyone starting a band: don't rehearse in a garage. And if you are going to rehearse in a garage during the summer, don't do it in the winter. Inspiring and moving, I believe they're oh, self-penned. Can you tell us something about them? Yeah, we were quite lucky in the band because all four of us write songs. Wow. So uh, Ronnie's probably the main songwriter, um, but on the CD, the uh, myself and Derek and Kieran have got two songs each, and Ronnie's got six songs. So uh, it's, it's it's quite good that we're not just relying on one person to, to write songs. Um, and you know, I think we've got some pretty good stuff, and we all like playing on each other's songs, and we all like coming up with the arrangements, and we all kind of put ideas in and stuff, and you know, it's good. Yeah, and the actual two, the two, two songs you did today, can you tell us something very uh, moving? I yeah, well, the, the one Ra Ronnie sang is called Broken Door. Um, I don't really know what that one's about. It's about a broken door. <laughs> I sing backing <laughs> vocals on it, and <laughs> I don't really pay much attention to the rest of it. Um, <laughs> It's, what is it about? It's, it's um, not about a broken door. <laughs> it's not about a broken door, that's what it's called. Though. Listen to the song and we'll yeah. find out. Um, and the one I uh, sung is called Stone of Manon. And uh, I come from a little town called Clackmannan, which is oh, in Clackmannanshire. Right, yeah, yeah. 
And I don't know if you've ever been there, but there's in the centre of the it. town. Yeah, yeah, they've built a bypass, which is probably quite a good idea. But um, in the centre of the town, there's this funny standing stone thing with another stone cemented on the top, and it's called the Stone of Manon. And it, it's very, very rude looking. I can't really say much <laughs> more, but... Um, I get the picture. Yeah, it's quite a strange looking thing. But there's all these local legends about what it's what it is and what it's about. Robert the Bruce was supposed to have sat on it before the Battle of Bannockburn yeah. and lost, wow. his, lost his gauntlet. And then he was he, he, told his men, he told his men to hunt for it and he said, look about yeah. ye. And that's the motto of Clipman and look about ye. So I was quite interested in this stone and I wanted to write a song about it, but I quickly realised there's only so much you can write about a stone. So the first verse is kind of about that. And then the rest of it is kind of all about Dark Age history because there's some speculation that the people that lived there went off to fight the Saxons wow. and they got defeated and then the Saxons pushed up and that's pretty much why we speak or people spoke English right. here because they brought English up and the language that was spoken before was kind of obliterated because it was more like Welsh, uh, sort of Celtic language, but the kind of Welsh uh, side of it. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit of a mishmash of ideas all in one song. But, uh, and Ronnie, can you tell us what that dark door is hiding, what that green door uh, is hiding? I'll give you some hints about it, but I'm not, I'll probably not go into the detail. No. I'm, I'm, most of my songs are, uh, I guess, are probably introspective, you know, they're all kind of thoughts and ideas that pop into my my head. So uh, that one in particular, it's, you know, the, the old phrase about one door shuts, another one slams in your face, that type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's really a kind of, I guess for me it was like a, how do you get through those periods of frustration in your life when maybe things aren't going every way that you want it to go and sometimes you feel like there is no doors open for you or the door's broken and you mm -hmm. can't push through the door uh, and it's really just that kind of, you know, examining how do you get beyond that yeah. point, how do you keep going, how do you, how do you persist so that when you actually get through the door, it, it doesn't really matter the door was there or not. That. That's really it. I mean, mo most of my songs have these kind of fairly, like I say, random thoughts and ideas that, that pop into my mind. Very it's probably mystical. a bit of therapy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Places I recall, dark and grey and never small. Baby of the band, I believe you are. Can you tell us a bit about how you joined uh, um, Scalas? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was actually out on my two-year anniversary with my partner. Um, so we'd been out for a meal. Um, I decided that we wanted to that, that I wanted to listen to some music. So we went down to Whistle Binkies, and um, you know the music wasn't all that great that night, and you know it was absolutely it was far too loud as well. So I says, well, why don't we go up to Captain's? At least you know we can have a conversation and, you know, not get completely blasted and stuff um, by music, that is. And um, so we wandered in <laughs> and, uh, like, Helen, who used to work behind the bar, was like, oh, you know, check these guys out. They're really, really good. Uh, you should go and have a yeah. have a jam with them. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to do that. Uh, but I noticed behind Derek there was a cajon and nobody was playing it. So um, I went up and asked if I could play it. Derek was like, yeah, just jump on after the next song and um, we can have a jam in that. And then, um, so I went up and went up to Anna, my partner, and says, um, okay, I'm going to go and play with them. And she was like, oh, for God's sake. So, <laughs> but she says to me, if you don't, um, if, if I stop and join this and you have to stop and we have to go home, but I ended up pretty much playing with them right until the end of the night. Wow. And then uh, Gordon got in contact with me over Facebook and asked me to come and play again the next month. And, um, well, that's basically been it since the last five years. I've still been coming down on the, the 
the fourth Saturday of the month to come and play with these guys. Derek, I believe you have a new CD coming. Can you tell yeah, us about that? Yeah, um, we started, with, well, we tried a few different ways to record the CD. We went to a studio down in Leith and we also felt a bit under pressure for time and everything. So eventually I kind of built a recording studio in my garage at the house. We've been recording it there and it's been quite a long process, but we're very nearly there, there, there with it and we're quite excited to say that it'll hopefully be out early January. All right, okay. Yeah. And the two songs today, will there be... Uh, I think Richard. they are both on it. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, so they're both Excellent. from the new CD. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's been quite a it's been quite a process, but uh, yeah. we've, we've is this your first CD or if you yeah, it's the first first one of my band. We, we recorded a CD for uh, Gordon's daughter beforehand, so it's kind of been a process of learning how to use the equipment and the software and how to perform as a band and do it that way. So it's been that's that's been the kind of j the gist of it over the last four years or something. I think five, yeah. five years. Five okay. years. Well, long process. But yeah. They're no longer virgins, and no. Right, so. I think we're all quite uh, quite excited about the result that we've got. It's uh, we're looking forward to getting it out and getting people to hear it. Good, and people will be able to buy it online or. Come I think yeah, I think, I think I think the plan is we're going to get some CDs pressed to sell at gigs and stuff like that, and then we're going to um, probably release it on iTunes and Google Play and all that sort of stuff as well. Excellent. So what's the space? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. In the town where I was born There was a very ancient stone Named for a sea god, so they said That never made much sense to me Forty miles from the sea And a land where hills rise tall and rivers went and they never told us much about the men who hewed that stone and dragged it to the look of a Their voices are as still as that cold our lump of stone The long forgotten songs are at an end Did you look at from the Mayan on the night before you arrived Across the fertile Karsland where your people did abide? Did you sing your songs of heroes? Did you dare to hope your names? Did you one day be a mortal and they sung around the flames? Did you ride up when the sun came up? Prove your loyalty. 
Watch the heathen Saxon push him back into the sea. Did you kneel down by your sacred stone? Offer up your prayers. For the old gods can be trusted in these godforsaken days. Did you cross the mighty river with the buckles at your back? Did you ever stop to think that you were never coming back? Oh man, now oh, you die then Your power will be broken And your songs will all be forgotten By your children, children, children Did you ride hard to the Nidan Along the Roman way You swear upon your children's lives To never run away Did you drink hard of the colour me Till everything went black Your warlocks had waited He planned out his great attack And after many homesick months Set out on your quest Your numbers were my allies From Gwyneth and the West Three hundred was your number As you came contra threats Sergeant Jamel Shiner As you rode towards your deaths By your children, children, children Some say only one came back, and some say all were slain. Three hundred fallen heroes left to run upon the plain. And was the heavy price she paid measured in the end? By wailing sacks and children, women without the men. For even though you hit them hard, of this there is no doubt Their kin came off for vengeance And they drove you 